Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how the atmospheric circulation patterns work on the planet. I'm going to look at a cross-sectional view, I'll look at an overall Earth view, and I'll explain it in such a way that you can generate it yourself um, from memory, just, from, just knowing a few things, and it will help go a long way towards explaining how Earth circulation patterns are changing under our abrupt climate change that we're presently undergoing. So this is looking at the Earth. This is the zero degree equatorial line. I'll draw the 30 degree north, 60 degree north. And this is 90 degrees north, which is the Arctic. And let's go down the other way. So this is 30 south, 60 degrees south and 90 south. So this is Antarctica. Okay, so this is the basic geometry. Which way is the Earth spinning? It's spinning on its axes. We know that it's got to be spinning this way because when you get up every morning, sun rises in the east. So if it's dark here right now and the sun's over there, we have to be spinning this way for the sun to rise in the east. If we were spinning the other way, the sun would rise in the west. So we're spinning this way. Okay, so, so the basic principles to generate the circulation of the air um, is the fact that hot air rises. So the equator is the hottest, right? So hot air rises at the equator. It's very hot, so it rises a lot, a lot. In fact, it goes up to about 17. The um, lower atmosphere, the troposphere, where all the weather happens, is about 17 kilometers high at the equator. So then the air has to move. So the, the air is rising up here. Okay, Some, It has to move to the north and to the south. So the air moving to the north moves along here, and then it descends here and then it retraces here. So this is a convection cell that is generated and we get a similar one in the southern hemisphere. Now a couple things that you'll notice is the thickness here is 17 kilometers and it's declining here and it'll decline more and more because cold air is compressed, stays nearer to the surface of the earth. Warm air expands and fills more of the, of the uh, it makes the lower atmosphere thicker. Turn this on its side and it's just a convection cell. By the way, these things are called Hadley cells. H-A-D-L-E-Y. This is the Hadley cell. Okay. Turn it on its side. Let's say we have a kettle of water. Okay, we put, uh, we put it on the burner. So, so we have flame here, we're heating the water, the water rises directly underneath, goes to the outer cool area and comes back around. It forms a convection cell like this in the water. Okay, it rises, comes across. Right, so this is the motion. Put some pepper in hot water and boil it, just to see this pattern yourself. Okay, now of course it'll happen in, in three dimensions. You'll get this convection cell all the way around, two, two different cells. I'm drawing it in just two dimensions. Okay, so this is exactly what we have. The equator is the hottest, hot air rises. Okay, now think of this as a set of gears. So the air here is obviously descending and it will, it will have to come in from over here and it will have to leave over here and then it will rise up here. So the same thing happens here. Okay, the air is coming down, it comes in here, it comes out here, it comes up there. Okay, this is called the ferrule cell. Okay, this is the cross-section pattern. Now, you can guess what's going to happen here. 
because the air comes up here, it has to come from here, it has to go over here and descend here. Okay, this is a polar cell. And we'll draw it over here too. Rises here, comes this way, comes down, comes down. Okay, same thing. Okay, so this is what we see for the cross section. This is 17 kilometers. The air is very cold at the poles. So this thickness of air, if you like, at the pole is only about seven kilometers thick. Okay, so seven kilometers. This isn't much really. When you talk about three and a half kilometers of ice on um, Greenland, you know, the, ele the bedrock is also elevated. You know, the altitude of that ice is, well, about three, three kilometers anyway then three and a half kilometers, it's almost halfway up to the, to the uh, top of the tropopause. So this is the tropopause, the troposphere rather. Troposphere. And the upper edge of the troposphere is the tropopause. And then above it is the stratosphere. Okay, so what does this do on the surface of the Earth? The Earth, air is rising here. Now the pressure on the surface of the Earth is typically about a thousand millibar, which a millibar is equal to a hexapascal. You'll see both units. Okay, a low pressure area will be maybe 980 or something at the surface. A high pressure area will maybe be 1020 or 1030. Okay, so if you go across North America, the highs and lows typically vary um, in, in this range or slightly less this range. They typically vary only about 30 millibar, so maybe plus or minus 15 millibar above the nominal, typically. When you get a tropical, when you get a tornado, it's very, very low pressure in the, in the eye of the tornado, the center of the tornado. If you get a hurricane, then it's very, very low pressure inside a hurricane. So, so any lows are associated with storms, highs are associated with, um, with very hot weather, no clouds. Why is that? Okay, so the air is very humid at the equator. It's rising up. As you rise up, the air cools, the water vapor condenses into clouds. So we get a band of clouds at the equator. We get a band of clouds here. This is called the IT, CZ or intertropical intertropical convergent zone. So this band of clouds will go around the planet. Now it's not exactly at the equator. If the sun is over the equator at the equinoxes, it will be close to the equator. When the sun's in, in the boreal summer, so the northern hemisphere summer, then the sun, the, uh, basically the temperature, um, the equilibrium temperature line, if you like, will be shifted north, the ITCZ will be shifted north, and in an opposite in the northern winter, it's shifted to the south. So what happens when air rises at the surface? It creates a low pressure area at the surface. Right, the air rises, something has to fill it, air rushes in, lower pressure at the surface. Okay, air is coming down here. The air has lost all its moisture because hot air, you know, the air is very cold up aloft. So the moisture has already come out and condensed into water droplets, clouds, uh, perhaps even rained out. So the air is very dry that's coming down there. So it's pushing against the ground, it creates a high pressure here. Air is rising here, creates a low pressure at the surface, and air is descending at the pole, creating a high pressure there. Okay, so this alternates down here, high, low, and high, for the same reason. Okay, so now the other thing that you need to know is about the Coriolis force. We said that the Earth is spinning this way. So if you're here and you start moving in this direction, here you're moving to this way very quickly, as you go up here, the Earth's surface, because your, the radius to the center of rotation is decreasing, the Earth will be moving slower here, in, to the, this way, here, 
So the, the, ang the, the velocity on the surface is highest here to this direction. So it still has that component. So as you move up here, basically this causes a deflection to the right in the northern hemisphere. You always get a deflection of objects. It doesn't affect the speed, it just changes the direction. Okay, but in this case, this is high pressure, this is low pressure, so air wants to go from high to low pressure. Okay, air wants to go from high to low pressure, so here to here, it deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere from the Coriolis force. Okay, from high to low pressure, it deflects to the right. From high to low pressure, it deflects to the right. Put yourself upside down, it deflects to the right. Okay, now in the southern hemisphere, it's opposite. The Coriolis force makes things deflect to the left. So high to low, we get a deflection to the left. High to low, we get a deflection to the left. High to low, we get a deflection to the left. Okay, so at the surface, there's friction. If you're up aloft and you have a high and low pressure area, there is no friction with the earth. The boundary layer is about 1.5 kilometers, so you get geostrophic flow. So the flow of the air would be parallel to the isobar lines this is a low pressure line, high pressure line, be in this direction. Now at the surface, it doesn't bend all the way, it's not geostrophic because of the friction, so you tend to get the air moving like this at lines to the isobar. We'll get air moving this way. So this generates the trade winds. The air motion at the equator is this direction. The trade winds are moving here. Up here, where the jet streams are, okay, this is where the jet stream is, right? It's not that wavy, I'm just illustrating. So the jet stream is moving basically zonally, west to east in this direction. Notice at, the minus, at 45 degrees south, the jet stream is also moving this way, which is west to east. Okay, now there's other factors that are coming into play. So there's mountains, there's land-ocean contract, uh, contrast, and there's, there's a tendency for the jet stream to reach a resonance with three wavelengths. So this is a wavelength of the jet stream here. The jet stream in actuality will look like this. Going around the surface, going around the earth rather, at uh, the height of the, of the uh, up near the tropopause, and this is one full wave here. So we tend to get three of these, or three and a half of these, or four of these going around the planet, similarly in the southern hemisphere. Now, we've got cold, dry air up here. It's dry because cold air doesn't carry much water vapor. So that makes it down to these particular regions. These are the troughs of the jet stream. These are the ridges, the hot, humid air comes up into the ridges. So the problem with extreme weather events is when these jet streams get stuck into place. And I've talked about in that in some of the previous videos. So the winds in, at this particular latitude will tend to be going this way. Okay, the winds at this particular latitude will tend to be going this way. So you end up getting the Beaufort gyre up here and the transarctic drift up here. This is the way the air circulates. Down here, um, you tend to get, in this region, you'll have winds going this way. In this region, you'll have winds going this way. Like I said, here you'll have winds typically going this way. Okay, so you can look at any position of the Earth, and from this basic three-cell model, you can figure out what's going on and get a better understanding of the atmospheric circulation. So. Turn this video off, go to a piece of paper or a blackboard, hot air rises, there's three cells, and things get deflected to the right in the southern, northern hemisphere, left in the southern hemisphere. Thank you.